Hey Wanderers, and welcome back to the Wandering Gamer Network plays Kingdom Hearts 3. I'm Zach. And I'm Mandy. Okay, now can we talk about the worst sin? What am I? Uh... Oh, I accidentally, I accidentally loaded something. I used up all my magic for nothing. Uh... But you got a bouncy thing. Meow meow balloon? Is that what it says? Meow wow? Yeah, they're from one of the games. It's weird. Interesting. Anyway, the worst part is where the good guys are trying to stop the bad guy from preventing the Holocaust. They have come for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I was doing a little bit of research after the movie, partially because I had Wikipedia open most of the time so that I could uh, understand what was happening. Um, but apparently they had to make... Grindelwald worse because too many people identified with him or thought he was like in the right and you know it's it's definitely what do you mean they had to make him worse you know I, I don't actually know what they did but um they, they just had to make him more unlikable because he was too relatable what would they should have like? Would they? Do you want to know how you do something with World War II? Because you gotta get clunky and it's weird because you shouldn't. You, you shouldn't sh ignore it. Well, you, you shouldn't. You just shouldn't set something in that time period where you have to acknowledge it. Yeah, realistically, yeah, but. Um. But once but, you're in but, that time period. But what they should have done. They should have had it be like, hey guys, like this thing's gonna happen. It's gonna be bad, and we can take control of the world, and be like, him being like. We're not going to do anything for the war, and then we're going to kill any muggles who are left, so we're in control. You know? Yeah. Well, especially when he's basically already talking about exterminating uh, muggles in the first place. No, but Queenie, Queenie joined him so that she can marry Jacob. That's just so dumb. So dumb. They completely... One, this is this is an issue with the fact that there, you know, it wasn't written down first, and no one really proofread it. Um, you know, their Queenie's character has just is totally different from the first one. Wait, so you mean the the she she doesn't realize the bad guy's gonna murder all the muggles? Sorry, uh, I the guess nomadges. not. Well, considering she can read minds, like. I except for his apparently. Yeah, apparently except for his. Which is never talked about or explained. Which okay, here why? Here's here's an idea about with a, a script doctor. Why not have her like say something when she first meets him? Like have her get really scared because she's like, Why can't I read your mind? Why can't I can't read you? I can't figure out what are you doing? You know, like, because if she's able to read everyone else, like that should be alarming. That should be, you know, something. And then, um, you know, he can like explain that. Oh well, I'm just like you. I've just figured out how to throw up my defenses, and I don't know. Maybe make that an issue Queenie had. I mean. I mean, there's so many different things you could do. Where's this stupid UFO? There it is. <laughs> there's so many different things you can do, and yet they just ignore everything and just well, and give her a very dumb one note. The thing is, like, I don't understand why they aren't more careful, because Harry Potter fans, like, comb through everything. For better or worse, you know, like... But like, you well, know, like these, these people have been like read the like the fans like read the books every summer at least, you know, like some of the like the hardcore ones. So it's like, I would make sure like if I had a fandom following my stuff that like, um, closely, to make sure that I like didn't create a faux pas with something, you know, like. Well, <laughs> talking about a faux pas, the fact that McGonagall isn't supposed to be born sorry, until 1935 but the movie's set in 720 in or I'm sorry in the 1920s and she shows up as like a 20 30 something year old woman 
like and she's not supposed to even be born yet like this is this is a huge issue where like jk rowling doesn't even know what her timelines are or like the fact that you that he uses accio on a living creature isn't even his real room I I need to go back. I almost want to go back and watch that because I do remember that criticism. But he was sitting on top of a suitcase, so I think he was. So I thought he was doing that to the suitcase. Maybe I as but, I said I haven't seen him. I've only listened. To yeah, yeah. There's a there's a couple things that I'm like, yeah. The criticism is a little too nitpicky, but but like, I'm like but like. The Harry Potter fandom is like they or not, they no. know they know when you're doing something wrong, right? And like, no, nah, I'm not saying all of them. There are people within the fandom who are that nitpicky, who are the people who have been reading these books every year, well, you know, three or four times a year because their favorite books ever. I'm not so sure about that. So I'm just like confused why J.K. Rowling didn't spend a little bit more time and make sure she didn't mess up stuff. Yeah, well, like, okay, the original first book was published in 1997 like and it's 2019 so these books have been around for over a decade now and people like the fact that even she is a part of Pottermore like the website where they just give you more and more lore and background information like people are paying attention Right, the fact that Powder, Powdermore still exists in, a, in any functional capacity shows that people care. Yeah, and people go and they'll just read more. You know, they'll read more information about the books and because they want to know more about the world. It's such a... It's such a good... Uh, it's such a fun world to play in. Where's Rex? Hey, he took off. Said he wanted to prove to you you could trust Sora. Oh, good. He's up there by the video games. <sighs> well, here we go again. Huh? <laughs> dun, this dun, dun. Us. He's not safe. The Heartless are out there. You're right. <sighs> Sora, well, Donald, I think that basically you... covers Any chance you could Harry Potter, the Fantastic Beast stuff. Sure. Um, Thanks, guys. So... I mean, I'll still go see the third one, mostly because I'm curious if they're going to be able to tie it in and if the second one got enough hate that they'll, like, condense it down to a trilogy instead of five movies. Are you going to go see the third one or are you just going to, like, red box it? Oh, I'll red box it. <laughs> You're not going to pay $10 to see it in theaters and be confused? You know, there's too many movies that I want to see that I may I or may not be able to see, depending on if I get a babysitter. So I'm not going to oh waste... Oh, my goodness. Let me tell you how terrible it is to try to... Oh, look, my like, gosh. One of our friends is trying to convince us to go see Captain Marvel again with him. <laughs> and he's like, well, you could rewatch it with us. I'm like, We're lucky we got to see it the first time. Like, yeah, like okay, wait, let's, let's talk about this being like... Uh, parents thank goodness uh as parents we have friends who are parents because the way that we got to go see captain marvel in like a decent enough time that it was like i think it was only the second weekend it was in theaters is we dropped off uh we we watched uh your son for the first round and then you stayed at our house and watched our son so we could go, which basically is just like it took all Saturday for us to go and see a movie right. so we could all see it. Right. And it's just like, and you guys have never in any way said you wouldn't watch Rowan multiple times. Oh, no, no, not. But with that, definitely it's like, fine with that. It, it just, I don't want to take advantage of you and use up all of your goodwill to just go see uh, the same movie again well and it's it's just like trying trying to make it so that we can all see it um because i think another option we talked about was like well to, uh you know friday night you'll go see it but then saturday night we'll go see it and it's just it, it ends up taking away so much time when like a movie is a long time and I'll be honest, I don't know how we're going to do Endgame. Yeah, I have no idea. Because I saw it's supposed to be like three hours, <laughs> which I'm not surprised. Like, it's going to be a long movie. But I was like, when I first saw that, I had two thoughts. 
My first one was, now that I've had a baby, my bladder is... I don't know if I can handle a three-hour movie. But two, <laughs> my, my other thought was, um, are we just going to like have to plan a whole Saturday again around seeing this? Yeah, or like, do we invite parents down that weekend and just have them watch the babies? I don't know. Endgame's going to be a rough. Endgame is going to be rough because that's one I definitely want to see in theaters. Yeah, I want to see it like opening weekend too, if possible. Ooh, I don't. I, I'm I'm kind of at the point where I I'm just gonna be happy if I see it in the first, um, two or three weeks because uh oh, no, not Buzz. Come on, Buzz, quit fooling around. No. I can't believe it. Buzz has been taken over. It's what he was worried about. What did you do to him? You put a heartless in it. Do you not right? Like, d- don't you know how this, this works? I am testing. So this I, was, I like how like <laughs> just evil villainy he is. Like, it's just so good though. You know, where it's like the hero's like trying to hit him, and he just keeps teleporting away. Bond. Like not even looking like he so cares. And when those bonds are stretched to their limit, when they are worlds apart, can cloth and plastic hold on to their hearts? <laughs> Okay, I know we got quiet there for a minute. I was listening to the music. It's the music is really good. Well, and like this, like this dialogue for him, like the villain right here, isn't bad. Like, no, it's, it's a little goofy because like the whole like um conceit of Kingdom Hearts is a little goofy. I like how like Buzz is just like casually just continuing to shoot. No one's trying to like stop his like arm from pressing a button on it. Right. Not this time. Oh, shoot. See, they should end the cutscene there. Uh Uh-oh, does the cutscene keep going? Maybe. Uh, Why are we watching a movie? (laughs) Oh, Kingdom Hearts. Okay, what were we talking about before I got distracted by... See, more of a cutscene. It's like we understood what happened, you know, like... Oh, wait, is he in the video game now? Yeah. Haven't you heard? In this world, you come from a video game. Uh, that, <laughs> that's the excuse. Watch my from inside that screen. That is, if you manage to find a moment's rest. <laughs> Have fun fighting. Bro, it's like, why did we need that? Like, we didn't need. There's got to be a way out. But no, that should have just been like dialogue talking while you're fighting or moving around. Yeah, like they just made everything into a cutscene. Whatever. Oh, it's fine. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Uh, I forgot what we were talking about uh, prior. Movies being hard with babies. Oh, yeah. Um, cause let, okay, so let's see. We've got uh, we've got Endgame coming out. Oh, you know Cody and I want to see Detective Pikachu. Oh, I want to see Detective Pikachu. Yeah, though. Detective Pikachu is a big one that we ideally would like to see in theaters. I think that's the one Cody's most excited for this year, actually. Yeah, he doesn't care about Endgame, I don't really think. I don't think so. Um, He's been marveled out for a long time, though. Yeah, which I can understand. Yeah, it's fair. Um, Okay, I'm pulling up movies that are coming out. Detective Pikachu looks good. Oh, you know what? He is excited for Shazam, and I'm interested, but that's one that I could skip in theaters. I could see Redbox. I think Shazam doesn't look bad by any stretch, but I also just don't care. It looks interesting. Okay. Um, Oh, I know he's excited for Hellboy, but I just don't know if we're going to be able to see it in theaters. Um, Let's see. Endgame, Detective Pikachu. He's also a big fan of John Wick, so... Yeah, the movie that he said he'd watch with me and hasn't watched with me. (laughs) Well, you can bring that up with him. Um, uh, what do you think about the live-action Aladdin? I don't know. I have mixed feelings because I think Will Smith should stop acting because he doesn't look like he cares anymore. <laughs> I, mean, I don't think you're necessarily wrong. Because well, like people were like were hating on how the genie he looks as a genie. I'm like, I don't care. My problem with him as a genie is that he looks like he does not care. Yeah. And it's not that I think he'll be bad by any stretch. It's just like. He looked like he stopped caring a long time ago about movies. It's kind of like um, 
Nick Cage or like a lot of the complaints that people had with like Marvel uh, Infinity War where it's like a lot of the actors just like look tired. Yeah. Like they're tired of being this character. And like that's what just like really what it feels like with Will Smith with every movie he's in nowadays. Well, like he doesn't like he doesn't need to be acting anymore. Like he's he he did a lot of his good stuff in the 90s. Um and so it does kind of feel like if he is doing acting, like you would think if he's choosing to do it, he'd be enjoying it. And at least more than he is. Yeah. So it is I, I, I can agree with that. His performance feels it doesn't it doesn't feel as authentic as it would with somebody who like really wanted the part. <laughs> yeah. Um, at least from the trailer. We could be wrong, but I, I haven't been impressed with Will Smith in a while. Yeah. You know? Um Oh, okay, and then we have Toy Story 4. I don't know if I want to see that in theaters just because, like, I don't want to, like, promote bad behavior with Disney. <laughs> I I can agree with that, actually. You know, as we talked about, like, I'm not excited for it, and I don't want them to just be like, oh, look, you came to see this movie while I was in theaters. I'm like, well, I came to it in spite of you, not because, you know? Yeah, well, and that's another one that I feel like I could I could red box and... I haven't seen Not a Pixar movie like in theaters in a long time. I either. haven't either. I haven't seen a like Disney movie in theaters for a while, which kind of makes me sick. Well, I guess Incredibles 2. Oh, That's you're the right. Last Th- one. That was Pixar as well. But yeah. that one, that was so good. That was good. Um, okay, uh, we have Spider-Man Far From Home. I want to see that. That looks really good. I, I'm really enjoying... Um, uh, Tom Holland as He's Spider-Man. He's a really good Spider-Man. He's, he's been a lot of fun. He's got the right amount of cockiness or, like, snarkiness. While also being really awkward. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he's got the right amount of dweebishness combined with the right amount of, like, goof or, like, confidence. Like, making jokes. I agree. Um, oh, and then we have um, the live-action Lion King. I don't know why. That one I don't want. I don't want to see it in theaters, but I do want to see it because Donald Glover is Simba. More importantly, though, more importantly, is John Oliver Zazu. So. That is, yes, that's another big one. <laughs> and, and I, so I don't think it's anywhere near necessary, even kind of, but I can't begrudge any movie for giving me more James Earl Jones as Mufasa. Yeah, yeah. So I don't think I want to see it in theaters, although actually I feel like a theater experience for that would almost be better. You know what I mean? Yeah, it, it, it definitely would. But I'm not going to hurt myself trying to go see it in I'm theaters. also not going to pay you like the 10 to $15 to go see it in theaters for just me, you know? Yeah, well, and the other thing too is like... Okay, we know how Lion King goes. We don't know how Endgame goes. So, like, spoilers right. suddenly become a much bigger deal. Right, and Lion King's like, it's going to be Hamlet again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there, I'm sure there will be other things that they've added, but... Um, oh, I guess Buzz is just done doing stuff. No, he's not here. I'm just fine. Oh, he disappeared. Wait. Oh, Where's we're sad Buzz? now. Um, okay, so this is one I definitely don't want to see in theaters, but I think is hilarious because I didn't know this was coming out until like two days ago. There's a Dora the Explorer movie that, if they play it straight, looks hilarious. Have you seen the, I think it's like College Humor, like Dora the Explorer as an adult? It's, it's like that, except not as, um, violent. (laughs) It's not as violent. So like the trailer I saw is, uh, she like pulls out a knife and her like high school friend or like yeah, I guess her high school because of course everyone's in high school and her high school friends are like well of course Dora has a knife <laughs> it, it I need looks, to see this trailer now you should watch the trailer it's pretty funny um oh apparently there's a new Maleficent movie pass yeah I'll pass on that the, I saw the first one years after it came out and it was not worth it yeah I know people are going to be excited about Zombieland too. I'm not excited for it in theaters. Um, I don't know. They they tried to make a TV show that didn't go over well. Okay, so in November, the two movies we have that (laughs) I'm just laughing at, we have Sonic the Hedgehog, uh, which is hilarious. But then we also have Frozen 2. 
Uh, man, oh. I have lots of thoughts about Frozen, but I, I, I kind of have to save it for the Frozen world of this. That's true. Yeah, we'll get to that. I, I do think that'll be... Um, I'm interested to see what happens, but I also don't think I'll see it in theaters. I don't think that'll be a theater one unless we I go for like my birthday as like a, oh, we should go to the movies. A treat yourself day. Yeah. Oh, they also have this movie coming out, A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. See, look at, the, look at this. Look at this. This is like what you need to do for all, like half the cutscenes you have. Like... Yeah. Like I'm fine with that where it's like, oh, you want you don't want me to miss something. You draw my attention there. Yeah. Cool. Um but there's a beautiful day in the neighborhood which is like uh Tom Hanks playing um Mr. Rogers? Yes. Which actually looks good. Oh, and then um I should have remembered this was a thing. In December we have Star Wars episode 9. Oh yeah, I want to see that in theaters. Yeah, that's another one I'm going to have to see in theaters. So we, need get, we should get our parents down here for that one. Yeah. Our, our parents separately. That way we can all like go watch the it together. Block <laughs> Funny. To use the gigas to move them? Yeah, um, I'll yeah I, I think I, I think December that should be a pretty uh, that 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 should make sense for getting parents to watch. Yeah. For Star Wars, we're enough Star we're big enough Star Wars fans that I feel like. We need to see that within the first two weeks. Yeah, I, I want to see. I, I know, Star Wars deserves to be seen in theaters, especially since this is gonna be maybe the last one for a while. Yeah, depending on uh, how it does. Because so speaking of toxic fandoms, how are we gonna uh, reach that? it makes me so sad. I really well, like Star Wars, and <sighs> there's just. This yeah. There's just issues. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. It makes me sad too because I really like so. Um, I really liked Episode Eight, and what's so funny to me is my dad really liked it too, but then my dad started watching um, videos on YouTube that talk about basically why you shouldn't like it. And a lot of the stuff he's talking about are very logical things. Like, it totally destroys the whole point of gunship battles if you can just hyperspace through another ship. Would, but it doesn't, though. The thing is, like, well, here's the thing. I haven't researched into it, but, like, building a ship... Like in theory, takes a lot of a lot of time and resources. Right. Like, cause like think about it this way. Like, like is it like, uh, also it costs lives. Yes. But like, look at how like in war, do we just like ram ships into each other? Cause like in general, like if you ram a battleship into a battleship, they both sink. Yeah. But you don't because it's time, resources, and lives. And I know the well, point. And, and like I'm, I'm an, I will admit, I'm an emotional movie watcher. So any movie that can take me on an emotional journey, I'm way into. And for me, if it hits the right beats, I'm gonna enjoy the movie more, and I'm not gonna think about that. Well, f my thing is just in general, with especially with something like Star Wars, it's like this is a world where magic exists yeah and we're like we're basically like trying to argue like physics and logic in a world where magic exists yeah we have people we have someone who can literally project himself across the galaxy and fight someone and win yeah why do we care about anything which if anyone complains about complains about that for goodness sake luke is a super strong jedi calm down and i love him <laughs> yes because of episode eight not because of I, anything yes i agree i like him more because of episode eight i didn't care about him until episode eight and i'm like man he is one of my favorite characters now because he's interesting yeah anyway we should probably wrap this bad boy up Sounds good. Yep, we're definitely getting to that point. We can always talk. I can talk more about the last Jedi. I can't. I about once every month. I talk. I go on my extended rant to Caitlin about how why the last Jedi is good and everyone else is wrong. <laughs> well, I definitely agree with you. And so. she's just like Zach. Zach, we've been here. Can we? Zach, please. <laughs> Zach, please. <laughs> we need another topic. <laughs> well, all right. Until next time, everyone. Keep wandering. Bye. <laughs> Hello Wanderers, and thanks for listening to this episode of the Wandering Gamer Network Plays Kingdom Hearts 3. We hope you enjoyed it. If you would like to hear more content from the Wandering Gamer Network, check out the link in the description below. 
We have several actual play podcasts, including D&D 5th Edition and City of Mist. Until next time, keep wandering.